Hello everyone and let's do a book talk for That's Not My Name by Megan Lally. Fun fact, this is a debut for this author. This book is a newer release. It was published this year in 2024. This is a young adult and it is a thriller mystery and it is a standalone. There was an audiobook available when I did read this, available on Audible, narrated by Sophie Amos and Rob Moraria. And it was nine hours and one minute on standard one time speed, and this is told in first person with two POVs. The first POV we are following right out the gate is Mary, who is realizing she can't remember who she is. Um, doesn't remember where she is, what happened to her, so she has this amnesia. She does recognize that she is hurt, so we're thinking there's some physical trauma there. She is found by a police officer. He's, she is taken to the police station. He's trying to get her to remember stuff. And then this man rushes in saying his daughter is missing. He has a birth certificate. He has pictures. And he sees Mary and is like, that's my daughter. He answers questions for the police officer and Mary is released to this man's custody. She obviously with the amnesia doesn't remember that this is her dad or anything. And so you are following with her POVs as she is starting to get flashes of stuff and makes her start to question if what she is remembering with these is really her memory coming back or is it a figment of her imagination or can she actually trust this man or is he lying? Who knows? Uh, the other POV we are following is Drew, uh, and was that, or was it Drew's, yeah, so chapter one starts with the girl, Mary. Drew um, is in this small town, and he has been cu accused of making his girlfriend vanish. Um, they're thinking that she is dead, and they, the whole town is talking about her in past tense. He refuses to do so, but they are watching him like a hawk, thinking that he killed her. So he is being accused of this horrific crime. His two dads are very supportive of him and agree with him. They believe him. Everyone else at the school does not, at the high school does not, and everyone else in the town really does not. And so he's very much isolated. He does have a cousin who also kind of believes him. Um and things like that. So he is not giving up on the search for his girlfriend and will take some missing person flyers and post them around. People are finding it very odd that he does this uh, and continues to do this when she's basically been presumed dead at this point. Uh, but he is not giving up hope. And then you see as things start to come to a head with both of them and collide and then the aftermath and what's going to happen. So there is a twist at the end, which is the norm with thrillers. I personally was not expecting it. So I don't want to say too much because it's with thrillers and mysteries and horror. It's fun to figure out and try to pick up the small clues. Um, but you do alternate between Drew and um, Mary for their perspectives. So what are your content and trigger warnings? You have the amnesia and having the flashbacks and the stress of that. Isolation could be considered a trigger warning. Uh, what else do we have? Kidnapping, you have a missing child. You actually have death of a child mentioned um, as well as loss of a loved one, so death of a loved one. So those are your content and your trigger warnings. What are your representations? You have Guatemalan specifically mentioned. You have LGBT specifically gay as it is two men in a relationship who are they are both the fathers of Drew um, one of them is Guatemalan you have an egg allergy referenced as well as a strawberry allergy and you do have someone having what appears to be a severe allergic reaction if not anaphylaxis so and I think it's just considered more as of a severe allergic reaction because there's no mention of an EpiPen or needing to get someone to the hospital so that is your representation. Now, in case you're still on the fence, you're going, okay, it sounds intriguing, I can handle the content warnings, but what are the words that are being used? Well, we have the following. We have the name Jesus used four times, not in a religious sense. Bitch, five. Rape, two. It does not get descriptive with rape, it just says that 
someone might be asking for rape to happen or the rape did happen, things like that. So it does not describe. The name God 21, not in a religious sense. Dam 17. Ass 14. Piss 4. Asshole 7. Balls 4. The phrase God damn 5. Dick 3. Prick 2. Smartass 2. Screw once. Not in a sexual sense, but that word does still. I know there are people that that word does bother. Uh, the name Christ once. Not in a religious sense. As well as Lord twice. Again, not religious. Bullshit 6. The phrase God forsaken once. Hell hole once. Fuck 94. Remember, this is a young adult. Okay, so a little bit rougher. Nuts twice. Whore once. Hooker once. Son of a bitch once. And shit 66 times. So for a young adults, it's a little bit rougher with the language. But considering the situation that they are in, I would be letting some of those words fly too if I was their age. So yeah. So for me, I found that kind of more realistic. Even at this age, at being 40, if this were to happen to me, I'd probably be letting them fly, <laughs> those words fly. So just be aware of that. This does take place in Oregon. In case you're looking for books that take place in Oregon, this does take place in Oregon. And so yeah, have you read That's Not My Name by Megan Lally? Personally, I enjoyed the writing so much. She already has another book set to be released. So the next book that she has set to release as of right now is titled No Place Left to Hide. And the release date on Goodreads is January 7th of 2025. And there is now a book three set um, listed on Goodreads, but it is untitled and set to be released in 2026. So I'm excited to see how Megan's writing progresses. Now let's find... I want to go to the About the Author, and I'm going to read the About the Author for you. A long ago transplant from New, transplant from New Hampshire, Megan Lally now lives in the rainy oasis of Oregon with her family. When she's not writing twisted young adult novels, you might find her drinking one too many lavender lattes, stress baking, or arguing about the validity of glitter as a favorite color. It's absolutely a color, and it's the best one. And then it just says that this is her debut novel. So, again, let me know, have you read this one? Are you interested in this? Knowing that, one, this is a young adult, are you more that your thrillers need to be adult or middle grade? Or are you interested in young adult thrillers? And knowing that this is a young adult thriller and the language is a bit rougher and it involves a kidnapping, is this book for you or are you going to give it a pass? Definitely let me know. Talk to me in the comment section below. And until next time, stay true to yourself and enjoy a good book, and I will talk to you later.